Thank you for welcoming me into your home this morning. I'd like to share the word of God with you and encourage you in what he has placed in my heart. And I trust the Lord that uh, you are going to be blessed by this word. I want to speak to you about the question of questions or rather asking the right question. In the first book of the Bible, we come across the enemy to Eve saying, did God really say that you shall not eat of every tree that is in the garden? The intent or the purpose of the enemy was to cast doubt on what God has already said, had already said to Adam, trans, uh, transferred to Eve, so that the human race at that particular point in time would not do the words of God. And he has not changed. Up until today, the strategies are the same. The enemy is always trying to put doubt in your heart about what God has already told you so that you don't have so that you don't have the ability to do it or you're not interested in doing it. On the contrary, we find in the very same chapter in Genesis chapter number three, when God asked the first question to Adam, he asked Adam, where are you? He did not ask him because he did not know where he was. Because I'd like to remind you that God knows all things. Rather, God knew where Adam was and he asked him that particular question because Adam was not where God had placed him to be. Adam was not in his place of purpose of leading his family. And because he wasn't in his place, it cost him his residence in the Garden of Eden. The same is applicable for you today. This is a nugget. If you are not where God has placed you to be, you uh, forfeit your right to remain in the Garden of Eden in whatever situation that you're in. If you're not fulfilling your place of being a husband or being a wife or being a mother or father to your kids, you lose the right that your marriage should become a Garden of Eden or your family. If you don't fulfill your place in the body of Christ, even as you're supposed to, in civil society, even where the Lord wants you to be, you forfeit the right of enjoying the benefits of being in the Garden of Eden. Why? Because you choose not to be what God wants you to be. Well, I want you to realize that these were questions that were asked in the first book of the Bible and that the answers to the question have just revealed so much to you this morning. The question of questions is very important. In fact, um, we find it at the beginning of Paul's ministry, who as Saul was walking to Damascus, when suddenly a light shone around him or did shine around him, caused him to fall to the ground. And a voice came out saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? This is in verse 4 of, of, of Acts chapter 9. And the answer from Saul was rather a question asking, who are you, Lord? And as Jesus answered, Saul got to find out that he had been on the wrong side all along thinking he had been serving the Lord. And if you continue reading in verse number 6, you realize that Saul, when he asked the Lord Jesus, what should you do? Jesus led him into a place that when Saul eventually got the answers, it fulfilled the rest of his life. Saul was able to live the rest of his life from the answer that emanated from that particular question. I want you to realize this morning that God has the ability to answer your questions in such a way that the answers would fulfill the journeys that would come up until you um, leave this particular earth. If you write the ask questions to God, you'll be able to build yourself up from the answers that he gives unto you. The question is, are you asking the right questions? The question of question is important. Um, we find it even in the Old Testament with one of the most prominent figures, Moses, as he did see that burning bush that uh, Saul told us about last week, approaching and getting into a conversation with the Lord. He asked a very important question saying, what is your name? What shall I say to the name of the people of Israel? And the Lord answered and said, I am that I am. Well, whose I am that I am? I am that which you need me to be in whatever situation. In Genesis 1 verse 1, Moses writes that he is, cre is a creator, Elohim, the one who rocked the heavens and the earth. In Genesis 3, in Genesis 16 verse 13, we find out that he's Jehovah El-Roi. 
am the one who sees he sees me and this is you even right now in genesis 22 verse 14 we find out that he's a jehovah jireh the lord our provider all of these things started even as moses asked a very important question what is your name and that question was not only answered on that day but it was answered even as it began to script the first five books of the bible being it being revealed by God to him. In fact, the question it, of questions is so important. Why is it important, Sabah? Because when you ask questions from the Lord, what he gives to you would be first knowledge that would be revealed to you about a particular situation, and he will give you understanding as to what you should do with that particular knowledge. The combination of these two would give you wisdom. Wisdom is the um, knowledge of what to do in a particular situation so that you may be in a better position. And we find out even from uh, Proverbs 24 verse number 3 that wisdom, understanding and knowledge are so key. In verse 3 it says, through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established and by knowledge shall all the rooms or chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. If you want pleasant riches to fulfill your family, if you want pleasant riches and all the rooms to be filled with uh, precious riches, you must be bothered to ask the right question so that you may have wisdom, understanding, and knowledge about how you should lead your family, your company, and how you should fulfill your role in society and even in the body of Christ. It continues to say in verse number five that a wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases in strength. For by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I want you to realize this morning that what you need, even in this lockdown period, is wisdom from God, but it will not come unless you begin to ask the right questions. It is good that we pray for the coronavirus to end, and I am praying, I'm with you on the prayer, but I'm not missing out on the opportunity to pray and find the right questions that I should be asking in this season so that next year at this time I'm significantly better than I am in terms of relating to God, my fellowship with Him, my, my, my position in the body of Christ, my position in my family and everywhere where the Lord would want to use me and even my affairs, my finances and so forth. In fact, this thing of questions is so important that people of the world get to reap the benefits without us realizing it. Steve Jobs, as you would know him, we are told that in 1996, when he returned to Apple, he asked a question that was so important. He asked, who is Apple and what is our place in the world? As he began answering that particular question for almost the next two decades, he not only changed so many things that we know about personal computers and cell phones, but he was successful in all the things that he set out to do. And I believe that he surpassed even those things that he had hoped to do. At the point of his death, we are told that the four quarters leading up to that particular point, they had sold 72.3 million units of iPhones. In fact, that 80, um, around 80 billion in cash in their balance sheet and they had no credit for it. It all began with an important question, who is Apple, what is Apple, and what is our place in the rest of the world? If the people of the world can ask questions to themselves and to those that are around them and get so much power and get so much effectiveness, imagine how much effectiveness you would be walking in if you started asking the right questions to God so that you get wisdom out of it. I think we're looking at this poverty thing the wrong way. We're looking at this homeless people thing the wrong way. I think we're looking at this HIV and AIDS thing the wrong way. What are the questions that we need to be asking about poverty, about HIV and AIDS, about the outbreak of the coronavirus, about, um, about homelessness, about unemployment, about the economy that is failing, about families that are not in particularly the right direction. What are the questions that we are asking? Or rather, even, you know, forget things about things at the national level. Let's bring it down to your level where you are right now. What are the questions that you need to be asking yourself today so that you be positioned in such a way that when we come out of the lockdown, you are not only stronger and better mentally and spiritually, but you're in a position to reap much profits. What are the products that need to be created for the world today? 
day that would benefit us so much if we don't come out of this lockdown period or where do you need to be to so that um in 10 years time this is a jumping board for you to um, get much more wealth than you have right now i'd like to believe that the owners of netflix are smiling from ear to ear because everyone is at home everyone is subscribing and everyone is um watching and subscribing giving them money and they reap much profits from that guess what they're not the only ones if you start asking the right questions about the things that you're seeing around you about homeschooling about i don't know uh, whatever it is that you've seen in this period and you start to give yourself to the wisdom of God and you ask the right questions, God would reveal things to you that would not only change your life and the life of your family, but the life of those that are around you and possibly um, the way that we see things in the entire world. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word that you've given to us. I pray, Lord, that um, even as we continue, you may continue speaking this word. Cause for these words to be repeated in our hearts and reveal to us the things of might, mighty God that are mysterious and that are not known to the rest of the world so that we are better positioned, um, Lord, in this world to be better at everything that we do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and be blessed.